Therefore, it's time for a member's statements. The member from Bruce Gray owns South. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, today I stand to pay tribute to a great constituent, a terrific community entrepreneur, an exemplary citizen of this province, philanthropist, and a man who exemplifies the very best of Canadian values, Frank Colder. Frank was a large-in-life business person who truly lived life to the fullest. He was a farmer from day one who never lost his connection to his rural roots, a man who rolled up his sleeves to get things done, and an innovator who used his terrific people skills, honesty, and sense of humour to build a small empire that included a farm chemical and supply business, better known today as Sprucedale Agrimart, with offices in Terra, Hanover, and Manitoulin Island. In addition to his many interests, Frank was also one of the original six investors who bought the Owen Sound Platers, now the Owen Sound Attack, and was a driving force in helping keep the attack in Owen Sound. To his last day, Frank was the visionary behind the attack, being such a significant part of our Graber's Owen Sound community. But besides being a naturally gifted salesman, Frank also liked to give back to the community, donating countless hours of personal time to bettering the lives all, of all around him and serving on a variety of foundations and boards, including Trillium Mutual Insurance and the Owen Sound Regional Hospital Foundation that support the MRI campaign and the cancer suite at Graybury's Health Services. A quiet and humble man, Frank's actions spoke volumes, and as such, he was a true role model for his sons Chris, Jeff and Ted in so many ways. I attend numerous fundraising events throughout our community, and, and I can attest that there is probably not a charity in our area, area that has not been blessed with the generosity of Frank and his wife Sharon. They are the epitome of community, community builders who have made a difference. And so it is with a heavy heart that I announce that Frank passed away suddenly on November 2nd, leaving behind a legacy of salesmanship, community pride, strong family values, and a community that is better because of him. Frank's death is a devastating loss for Bruce Gray Owen Sound, the Ontario Hockey League, and the many great causes he worked on. However, through his community contributions and fondly remembered reputation, his legacy will undoubtedly live on and have a positive impact in the lives of many for many, many years. Thank you, Frank, for all that you achieved here, here. and contributed throughout your very successful life. Farewell, my friend. May you rest in peace. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from London Fanshawe. It is always a pleasure to rise in the Legislature as the MPP for London Fanshawe on behalf of my constituents. Today I am bringing to attention a very serious issue that is happening in London with regard to children and youth mental health community services. Over the summer, I met with Vanier, Ways, Craigwood, Marymount, Anago, and the London Family Court Clinic. These agencies provide com community treatment that helps our vulnerable children with their mental health therapy. They told me that in the span of two years, there has been an increase of 23 in-crisis intake for children's mental health services, with almost one quarter of clients having developed a suicide plan or attempt. Thousands of children are on the wait list. What happens when youth cannot access the mental health services they need? They end up in crisis. They find themselves in emergency rooms or entangled with law enforcement. Something has to be done about the chaos that has been created in London's children's and youth mental health services. At your request, Minister Matthews, 11 core agencies for children mental health in our area composed a document outlining a reasonable funding increase what a reasonable funding increase would entail if it were to happen. The agencies are still waiting to hear back from this Liberal government if additional funding has been approved. Due to years of, underfund of underfunding, agencies are speaking up and struggling to stay afloat. Now it's your turn to act. I am calling on the minister to take action. Will the minister commit to increasing funding in the Liberal budget? It's time to improve the funding for agencies in Ontario that provide direct support for our children and youth with mental health needs. Thank, Thank you, you, Speaker. Are there member statements? The member from Eglinton Lawrence. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I'd like to uh, speak about a, a wonderful local champion who passed away uh, on Sunday, Salvatore D'Amico. Uh, Sammy, as he was known, uh, lived till he was 38 years of, old, of age. Uh, he had his loving brother Frank and his sisters Maria and Lena, uh, Laura, I should say. Uh, his mom and dad, uh, Antonio and Caterina, loved him uh, so much, and uh, he was a very special person in that he uh, received a great deal of love, yet he gave back so much to his family and everybody around him. He was always uh, a positive force in the community. He participated continually, but always with a smile on his face and always sharing his love with others. And I think uh, Sammy and his family are a shining example of how when we have someone that's a member of our family that needs sometimes a little bit of extra help, when we help them, we are the ones that receive the love and the favour back. So Sammy was that kind of special person. Uh, he uh, 
is now gone upstairs, and we hope that he can still follow his maple leaves upstairs and that he can still uh, cheer for his favorite wrestlers uh, up in heaven. So uh, we all say uh, goodbye, Sammy. We're all going to miss you. Thank you. Further members' statements? The member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to raise awareness and about a very important campaign which originated in London, Ontario. The London Abused Women's Centre has launched its eighth annual Shine the Light campaign. Mm -hmm. The campaign runs every November for the entire month, coinciding with Ontario's Women Abuse Prevention Month. The campaign's purpose is to raise awareness of violence against women by turning communities across the country purple for the month of November. I'm proud that all members are wearing a purple ribbon today to show their support for this local campaign, and I hope that next year we're able to light the outside of the legislative building in purple to further show our support. The London Abused Women's Centre website states that purple is a symbol of courage, survival and honour, and has come to symbolise the fight to end women abuse. During the month of November, they are, they are inviting businesses, schools, places of worship, homes and everywhere else to go purple. The campaign started to expand in its second year across Ontario and then into Canada. This year, the campaign has grown internationally and has been adopted in Sweden and Australia. November 15th every year has been designated as Wear Purple All Day. It is my hope that one day soon this campaign will no longer be needed as we as a province, nation and world end the violence against women. I want to give a special thank to Megan Walker, the Executive Director of London Abused Women's Centre, and her team for the outstanding work they do day in and day out to keep our women and our community safe and the awareness that they continue to raise to stop violence against women. Thank you, Speaker. Well, the members, the the member from Timmins, James Bay. Well, Mr. Speaker, like all members here, uh, we live uh, very busy work lives. We're trying to be in five places at once, and today, while I was on committee, I unfortunately missed, uh, I think, a meeting that would have been interesting, which was an update on winter road maintenance uh, to happen this winter. And I just want to say uh, to my friends on the government side, I may have not made that briefing because of committee uh, engagements, uh, but I've got to say, uh, let's hope that we get it right. There used to be a time not that long ago that when you took the road in northern Ontario or southern Ontario for that fact, and you wanted to go from point A to point B, uh, with reasonable weather, you knew you got reasonable roads and they were in pretty good shape. We had this wonderful system, a hybrid, where we had public operators under MTO that operated snow plows, salt trucks, sand trucks, and others, and we would augment that with private contractors, and the MTO themselves were responsible for monitoring and making sure that equipment was dispatched. Unfortunately, the Liberals who were forward to privatization privatized the entire system, and we now have a system that's entirely run by the private sector uh, that has led to a lot of problems uh, when it comes to the condition of our highways. So let's hope that the government has learned as a result of some of these contracts. I know that they've made some changes. There's been some improvement, but we still have a long ways to go, and I just want to put the government on notice. Uh, all Northerners, and I think all Ontarians, will be keeping a close eye on the condition of our roads, and you can rest assured we'll be back to talk to the government should we see a repeat of previous years. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Ajax Pickering. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to stand in the House today to officially mark November as Hindu Heritage Month. On December 8, 2016, my private member's Bill 56 received royal assent that we all proclaimed unanimously. <clears throat> Pardon me. November to be Hindu Heritage Month in Ontario. Here we are at home to a large and vibrant Hindu community who have made significant contributions across fields, including science, education, medicine, law, politics, business, culture, and sport. Hindus have helped to build Ontario into the multicultural success story that is, and have helped to build this province into the best place to live, work, and raise families. I had the distinct pleasure to attend a special Hindu Heritage Month celebration by riding in Ajax on Sunday, November 5th. The event was organized by Sandu Mochan Hanuman Mandir and Cultural Centre in Ajax in partnership with the town of Ajax. And during that celebration, Ajax resident, community leader, and member of the Sandcat, Cecil Ramnoth, honored me with a very special personal tribute that included a signed frame staircase photo by Premier Kathleen Wynne's 
signature in place with that commemorated on Bill 56. I witnessed firsthand that Hinduism stands for throughout the very special days of the Hindu people that evening. My wife Donna and I were welcomed with open arms. We both felt the Hindu love of humanity that evening and fully understood how important Bill 56 is to Hindus. And I'm honoured to stand here today to commemorate Hindus this month and every day. The contributions that Hindu Canadians have made in Ontario are special. And as Mahatma Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For their members' statements, the member from Prince Edward Hastings. Thanks, Speaker. Today, my uh, friends in Belleville said a final farewell to a local hockey legend. Floyd Crawford died in the early morning of November 11th with family at his side. He was 88. Floyd was best known as captain of the fabled Belleville McFarlands that won the National Senior A hockey title, the Allen Cup, back in 1958, then represented Canada and won the World Championship in the spring of 1959 in Prague. Floyd and his wife Pauline loved Belleville, and they decided to raise their family there and were so blessed in Belleville that they did. Floyd and Pauline raised nine children who went on to be tremendous athletes in their own right. Three of their sons played in the NHL. Mark won a Stanley Cup as head coach of the Colorado Avalanche in 1996. All of the Crawford kids accomplished amazing feats, too numerous to mention. Floyd didn't just raise his kids to be fierce competitors and community leaders. He's credited with helping raise hundreds of young hockey players as a coach. Floyd was tough. He demanded commitment and effort from all of his kids and players. I remember riding on the Belleville Bulls team bus with Floyd during the 90s. He was the chief scout and architect of the Bulls drafts leading up to their only OHL championship in 1999. His son Lou was the head coach. Floyd had a keen eye for potential talent. I remember he was being criticized for using a second round draft pick to take this kid from Moose Factory who critics said was too slow. He said, when Louie gets a hold of this kid on the ice, he's gonna make him pick up his feet. He's got a shot. That is unbelievable. He went on to score five goals in Game 7 of the OHL Championship in 99, and then 56 goals one season with the San Jose Sharks. His name was Jonathan Chichu. To uh, everybody in Belleville, we've lost a hockey legend, but his legacy will live on. Rest in peace, Floyd Stone Pete Crawford. Thank you. For the member, the member from Durham. Thank you, Speaker. It's a great, great pleasure for me to rise in the House today to discuss the inspiring thoughtfulness and advocacy of a constituent of mine, Ava Freeler. She's sitting right here in, this, in the member's gallery. In late August, as you know, there was a fire at Port Perry Hospital located in my riding of Durham. Thanks to the wonderful emergency crews and the on-site personnel, all patients and visitors were, uh, were safe during, the, during that fire. It, has been, it was a traumatic experience for the community, but as I alluded to, all was removed safely from, from the hospital. Mr. Speaker, it is so nice to see community members come together in support of our beloved hospital. Nine-year-old Ava, who is with us today, held a fundraising drive at her parents' Aldemar gas station in Port Perry, in which she raised so far over $165. Wow. The donation will be going towards new equipment for the new Life Center. The outpouring of support from the community has overwhelmed our, our hospital executives and staff, as well as the community in general. Mr. Speaker, great things happen when everyone comes together. Thank you again, Ava, for your fundraising efforts and for creating awareness in our community. Thank you. Keep, keep up the great work, and I am sure you'll <laughs> raise a lot more. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Further member statements, the member from Nipissing. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, last month, I introduced Bill, uh, my private member's Bill 169, the Ontario Forestry Revitalization Act, which would permit uh, wood frame construction up to 14 stories in height. This is to accommodate two innovative projects uh, here uh, in Toronto being planned by George Brown College and the University of Toronto. The Council of Papineau Cameron Township in my riding has passed a resolution in support of Bill 169. They note that, quote, by increasing the use of harvested wood in construction, it will help Northern Ontario by providing jobs and will help Southern Ontario meet targets to reduce urban sprawl and reduce construction costs. 
Uh, as stated repeatedly over the years um, since introducing my private member's bill on this issue, it's a win-win proposition for Ontario. Papineau Township Council, uh, pa Papineau Township, Paparin, Pap <laughs> okay, <laughs> Papineau Cameron Township Council well, resolve. <laughs> thank you. Resolve that quote uh, council supports Nipissing MPP Vic Fidelli's 14-story wood bill. Here, here. It's worth noting that the federal government is currently accepting expressions of interest through its Green Construction Through Wood program for high-rise demonstration projects in Canada. So there's momentum uh, here, Speaker. I was very pleased when the government adopted my six-story proposal in 2015 and look forward to further discussion on Bill 169. Thank you very much. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's therefore time for reports by committees. The member from Toronto, Danforth. Speaker, I beg 